We are here now with Elon head coach Rich Skrosky. Uh, how's your day been going so far? A lot, been a lot great. of interviews. Yeah, been busy, and it's, it's great to have this kind of turnout for the CAA Media Day. And we do. We appreciate everybody's coverage. Absolutely. Now, this is your, your third season yes. in the CAA. You quadrupled your win total uh, from year one to year two. It's a process uh, in Absolutely. this league. Talk to me about the weekly grind that is playing in the CAA. Well, as we got into the conference in my first year, with it being the third, like you said, I think that's the biggest thing that you notice. Um, having been an assistant coach at Elon, uh, when Elon played in the Southern Conference, and people ask me, what is the biggest difference? It's the depth. It's, you know, the best teams are the best teams. And obviously last year, Richmond was that team. and. Um, you know, same as in the old Southern Conference when you had App State. Yeah. They were comparable. But when you go through the depth of the conference, and I kind of had one of those days my first year, we're filling out the preseason polls. And I'm, you know, weighing. I, I don't know the kids that great. But I got to, like, place number seven. I was ready to fill in this one team. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they can't be the seventh <laughs> team. So um, I, I think that's the biggest difference in the CAA. It's the amount of depth in which you have to, uh, you got to line up every week and be ready to play. Yeah, last season you talk about the depth. Four of your five conference losses were against national top 20 teams, not just the top of the conference, but in the nation. You won two of your final four. You played real tough on that final game against Delaware in a close loss. Do you feel like the way you played down the stretch can, can build some momentum into this season? No question, Scott. There, there's no question we are, aren't nowhere uh, near where we need to be, uh, but we have definitely made strides. And as you mentioned, you know, to be able to increase our win total by three games last year, and it is, it's a process, and that's part of the process. And hopefully we'll, we'll be fortunate enough this year to keep making those strides and hopefully get a couple more, you know, ticks there in the win, win column. You still have a young roster, though. The importance of John Silas, uh, right. an all-conference guy, to, to be a leader, a guy with experience on a team that, that has some youth. Well, Scott, we are young. Uh, when we report for camp next week, 73% of our roster will have three or more years of eligibility left. Wow. So it is a huge number. But to be able to have a guy like John Silas and those other older guys who were at Elon under the previous coaching staff, I, I, I can't tell you what my feelings are for those guys because they have been through a lot and the fact that they have bought into our vision, to our expectation, uh, we've raised the bar, and then what they've done for these younger guys, that they have said, hey, we have an expectation of excellence and we are going to be good. And I do. John, along with so many of those older guys, I give a lot of credit. And I am. I'm thankful for him to be able to buy in. And uh, I see him around here today, and I'm really proud of the job he has done. We're going to talk to, to John in just a moment. We're also going to hear from Connor Christensen, uh, who I want to ask you about. It's not every season that you get 11 games out of a freshman quarterback. Where can he improve year two, and how will some of that experience that he got as a rookie help in that? Well, I, I expect Connor really to improve in every facet of his game. And, you know, when the season ended last year, and we're still in a competition. You know, we've, we've kind of given Connor every opportunity to win the job, and that's part of him being here today. Mm -hmm. uh, but all through the offseason, the winter and summertime, uh, you know, it's really uh, – He's got to make growth in every part of his game, from his decision-making uh, to his accuracy to his technique. And that's, you know, one of the great things. Both him and Daniel, I've said this numerous times publicly, Daniel Thompson and Connor Christensen, I can't think of two better guys to represent our program as those two guys. And I'm really anxious to get camp going and seeing the progress both of them have made. All right, well, best of luck to you okay. in, in 2016. Thanks again, Scott. We appreciate it.